Welcome to the Trillion Dollar Coal Field, Mingo County, West Virginia, where coal, as they say, is king. And many in these parts would like to expand that kingdom by turning this black gold into liquid, a liquid fuel that could be used in cars, planes, and hopefully one day make America less dependent on foreign oil. It's cheaper than this, sure, I'm for it. A plan is on the table to build a $2 billion liquid coal plant here in Mingo County that, if all goes according to plan, could be up and running by the year 2012. It would be one of the first liquid coal plants in the country. We've got the raw product right here, so it just makes sense to do it right here. Williams in West Virginia is home to the nation's largest coal yard. Miles and miles of train cars filled with coal make their way from here to feed power plants all over the East Coast. With the price of diesel fuel skyrocketing, Mike Witt of the Mingo County Redevelopment Authority dreams of the day when some of that coal will be turned into liquid diesel to help support the local economy. We're setting up to produce ultra low sulfur diesel fuel, which can be used on your school buses for the school system, your trucks on the road here where they're hauling freight or hauling coal, these engines that you see right here for the railroad. The plant, which promises to bring hundreds of good paying jobs to the region, would use both coal and wood. Wood because it helps neutralize the carbon and is also an abundant natural resource in West Virginia. The coal and wood are heated and first transformed into a gas before being made into liquid. So just how much coal is in these mountains? Within 150 miles of where we're standing right now, we mine over 150 million tons of coal a year. Um, that's enough coal to power almost all the power plants in the East Coast. But what about the nation's energy crisis? Could liquid coal really help? Randy Harris, who has studied the idea for more than 20 years, says yes. If we were to take that coal and convert it into uh, diesel fuel, for instance, uh, 150 million tons of coal, we create 300 million barrels of oil. We import into this country every day about 16 million barrels. West Virginia Congresswoman Shelley Moore Capito is also pushing hard for liquid coal. She wants Congress to mandate domestic production of 6 billion barrels of liquid from coal each year by 2022. She says the United States coal reserves are larger than the combined oil reserves of the rest of the world, including the Middle East. It will be less expensive. It will use an abundant natural resource that we have here in our country and certainly in West Virginia. Capito says she's seen and heard enough excuses and that it's time to get serious about making coal into liquid. I know people are looking for short-term solutions, uh, uh, and we're trying some short-term solutions, but unfortunately, the long-term solutions are where we're gonna find the greatest relief. Turning coal into liquid fuel is not new. They've been doing it in other countries for decades. But the question remains, is it safe for the environment? All the studies and research that we've gotten done, it's, it is, it's very safe. The bottom line is, if we're not smart enough to, to figure out what our neighboring countries are doing, for energy independence, such as South Africa, such as the Germans down in World War II, such as other countries, China's building four or five of these facilities right now, then we're, we're gonna be behind the curve. We can't continue to depend on foreign oil. But some environmentalists claim liquid coal is one of the dirtiest energy sources available, with double the greenhouse gas emissions of gasoline. Harris says that's not true, and that liquid coal plants actually burn cleaner than oil refineries. He says many obstacles remain, though, including waiting for Congress to set the rules on carbon emissions for coal to liquid technology. But with the current oil crisis, Witt says there's never been a better time to turn coal into liquid. Somebody's got to do this, prove it can be done, and done successfully so that other plants can, can pop up, you know, throughout the United States because we need them. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Williamson, West Virginia.